Anti-black racism and the system of oppression still exist today in our contemporary society. For the black community, the fight against this oppression is a prolonged process that will extend beyond generations as racism becomes institutionalized. Over the centuries, we have seen great activists who made way for a revolution in this nation and in the world. Bring an end to the brutality inflicted upon black people by white people. But now, although on the outside things might have changed, and oppression seems like a thing of the past, internalized racism remains. Will things ever change? On May 25 of 2020, George Floyd, a Minneapolis resident, was killed during an arrest by a policeman. The defendant pulled Mr. Floyd out of the passenger side of the squad car, held him with a knee to the neck. His death sparked protests all over the country against police brutality, voicing a demand for police reform, as well as urged for the uprising of the Black Lives Matter movement and calling for an end to systematic racism. What started out as peaceful protests have turned into violence in many of the demonstrations nationally. Many ask the question, is this violence really necessary? Well, it's arguable that the persistent history of violence against the black community, as well as a lack of reform, caused major tension in the nation and eventually led to chaos. If people aren't going to listen when, when, when it's peaceful, then maybe they'll listen when something like this happens, you know? And throughout history, we have seen that violence and free thinking were some of the most important catalysts for a revolution, creating changes that would shift the history of peoples. But the violence stemming from these protests also created opportunists who looted and destroyed businesses and even attacked small business owners. This violence and looting became the center of backlash, drawing attention away from the movement itself. I'm outraged that people care more about someone looting than about a man being murdered on film. And this outrage is justified. Just look back at all the innocent black lives we've lost as a result of a lack of reform and accountability. Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, Manuel Ellis, Trayvon Martin, Tamir Rice, Michael Brown, Eric Garner, Volando Castile, Terrence Crutcher, Alton Sterling, Walter Scott, Freddie Gray, George Floyd. Not to mention the systemic racism that plagues our institutions and discriminates against our black communities such as the school-to-prison pipeline, gentrification and affordable housing, access to healthy foods and the grocery gap, access to health care, mass incarceration in the prison system, which of course includes law enforcement and racial bias. It boils down to a question of priorities. Do all lives matter? Of course. But Black lives matter right now more than anything. So what now, you might ask? Well, there's so many steps one can take to help instigate change and keep this movement going. Number one, educate yourself. Stay updated with the news, read articles, watch movies on institutionalized racism and civil rights movements such as 13th, Explained the Racial Wealth Gap, Time, the Kayleaf Browder story, When They See Us, Who Killed Malcolm X? Number two, take up space. Repost, spread the word, foster difficult conversations with your family members, email and call your local representatives, anything. Silence is complicity. Number three, donate. There's so many bailout funds, such as the Minnesota Freedom Fund and movements like Reclaim the Block that do need our support. Number four, sign petitions to advocate for racial bias training with police protecting incarcerated communities from COVID and to demand justice for George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. Number five, protest. Research local protests thoroughly and stand in solidarity with the movement. Number six, vote. Just make sure that the people that we put in charge have our interests in mind and have good morals. Remember that resistance is not a one lane highway. Maybe your lane is protesting. Maybe your lane is organizing. Maybe your lane is counseling. Maybe your lane is art activism. Maybe your lane is just surviving the day. Do not feel guilty for not occupying every lane. We need all of them. <laughs>